These two are the 8th inch and the 16th inch craft bones. They are exactly the same stuff as this, uh, it's just a different thickness. Uh, you can get craft foams at, you know, Joanne Fabrics, Michaels, AC Moore, Hobby Lobby, any of those. I got the uh, 16 inch stuff um, in a long roll that's, I don't, I don't even know, like 10 feet by like one foot. And I've already used some of it um, just from like a dollar tree. So, dollar tree is your friend. You will want to visit it frequently. Mm -hmm. um, and craft foam is awesome stuff because when you heat it, you can change its shape and it will stay that way. Um, which is what we would be using the heat gun for. And uh, if we have enough battery life left, I will actually demonstrate that later. Um, the next one we have is this. This is expansion foam. It is originally used for uh, if you're making insulation, it's for like caulking around like edges of windows and doors and you know making everything airtight. Um, this little can would make probably about a cubic foot of expansion foam. But one thing I will tell you, and in fact there's several things you need to know about this stuff. Um, first of all, see this little tube? This will get clogged up with foam uh, pretty well immediately after you stop using it. And since the foam sets up in about five minutes, this will be full of foam that you cannot use ever again. So you have to use it pretty well the entire can all at once. Um, the second thing you need to know about expansion foam is it says on the can that you need to shake vigorously for a minimum of 30 seconds. Do it way more than that, because the more you shake it, the more expansion you're going to get. Otherwise, you're going to get like this little rope of foam that's not going to cover very much and not be very useful for anything. Um, this stuff uh, is the um, craft stuff, is the great stuff expansion foam. Uh, it's the only kind I could find in the Home Depot, but they carried Home Depot Lowe's pretty well any hardware store. Um, it expands about an inch. Now, the good news about this is that you can layer it. The bad news is you have to wait for it to cure before you layer it, which goes back to the you need to use it all at once kind of thing. Um, the second thing I need to tell you about this is that you will probably need to get twice as much of this stuff as you expect you're going to need. Um, because it does not by any means lay down an even layer or an even, even depth. It comes out really bubbly. and. Um, you know, if you want to try and smooth it out, you're going to need to go back over it with multiple coats. Um, like I said, it was designed for insulation, not really for art, but, you know, we can use it. Um, that stuff you're going to want to cover with masking tape or paper mache over the top, um, because although they claim that you can paint it, they lie. <laughs> you cannot actually paint it. It liquefies and goes back to a gelatinous state. Um, you can actually uh, cure this stuff as you're spraying it. If you want to, to cure it more quickly, you can hit it with a little spray bottle full of water, and that can actually cause it to cure more quickly. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it for the foams I have here. Uh, there is one more type of open cell foam that I need to tell you guys about. Uh, that's upholstery foam. Uh, upholstery foam is obviously the stuff that you use in cushions. It's very squishy, it's very soft. Um, you cannot buy it in small amounts, you have to buy the whole big sheet of it. Um, but it can be really good if you want to be simulating like muscles or padding or for LARP stuff. That's excellent for those purposes. Okay, now we're going to talk about uh, the hard foams, the open cell foams, uh, closed cell foams. Closed cell foams, pretty well all closed cell foam has the same basic principles. Um, there's two major kinds of closed cell foam. There's the EPO foam, which I have no idea what that's like. And there's the EPS foam, which is the um, expanded polystyrene, which is what this stuff is. Uh, the polystyrene are, you know, the uh, little styrofoam 
bits that come off the little bubbles. Yeah. Like that's what those are. They started off life as tiny little styrene pellets that uh, got put into basically a puffer and blew them up to like 40 times their original size, and then they got heat gun together and they make this stuff. And I'm gonna pass this around, but I'm sure you already know what it feels like. Uh, it's super light, super you know, flexible. Well, not really flexible, it'll break pretty easy. But um, polystyrene foam like that, it's your basic styrofoam. Uh, it, um, you can get it at Home Depot or Lowe's or you know, just about anywhere really. Um, you use it for insulation mostly and it's you know, pretty effective stuff. Um, on its own, it's not really so great, but when you get it together with a lot of them all in one thing, or if you're able to get the big sheets where it comes in multiples like this, um, and then you laminate it together with Gorilla Glue, you can make a much bigger, much thicker shape and just carve right into it. Okay. So you could be like a Gundam. Yeah, you could. I've seen people who do Gundams with this. Um, the other one, uh, EPS foam that I want to talk about is the Pink Panther foam. Um, Pink Panther foam is also a um, closed cell uh, insulation foam. It comes in two major thicknesses. It comes in the two inch and the one inch. Um, and you can use it for different stuff. This stuff laminates really, really well. Um, but I'm going to pass around this smaller piece to focus on stuff though. Um, it laminates really well, but again, you need to use the right kind of glue. If you use the wrong kind of glue, it will eat right through it. Industrial glue will destroy it. Yeah. <laughs> Industrial glue, super glue, some kinds of hot glue, um, even like Elmer's glue, will eat right through this. Um, and I'll go over like the glues that you can use. Um, also, under no circumstance should you ever try using a spray adhesive that also does not work. Um, nor does spray paint and quite a lot of other things. It's awesome. Um, but pink panther foam comes in three flavors. You got the pink, which is your middle of the road hardness foam. Um, it also comes in blue, which is much denser, much tougher. It can be used actually as like a substitute for wood. Uh, and then the green, which I have a little block of here. Uh, most people are familiar with green, uh, green foam uh, because it's used mostly for like floral decoration and stuff. Uh, and I'll pass this around, but I mean, when you get it, you'll be able to tell right away. Like you can make impressions with this, even like with your finger. You know, I mean, you don't have to push hard at all to make like an impression with this. Um, but it's all the same sorts of stuff. So the green foam is really good for like the small detail work. Uh, Whereas like the paint and the blue foams are better for making bigger stuff. Uh, in terms of availability at Home Depot or Lowe's, you're probably only going to find the blue, uh, the paint rather, um, the blue and the green in mass production, you're going to have to buy online. Because I haven't found the blue anywhere uh, except online. Um, so that's what I have for the uh, uh, rigid foams as well. Uh, so while I still have battery life, I'm going to go over some of the surface techniques we can do, and then I'll actually get started with you know real demonstrations. Now um, you can surface these things to look like anything you want. Um, both the EVA and the EPS foams can be surfaced um, to look like metal or wood or leather. You know, just about anything, really. Um, this is some awesome stuff. Uh, I told you guys in the first meeting we had that a lot of times you're going to want to find paper. Uh, a lot of the surfaces that uh, you can put on these foams are actually modified papers. What I have here is actually a um, wood paper texture uh, that is, I think was meant for drawers. I bought this at like the Dollar Tree, you can also get it at like Home Depot or Ocean State or stuff like that. Um, this is like perfect if you need something to be like made of wood and you don't want to make it out of wood, you make it out of foam so that you get like the density, 
cover it with this stuff so that you get the wood grain, and for all the purposes, it's made of wood. Um, you know it isn't, but they don't need to. It's an important thing. Um, now, when you're using these foams, in terms of surface techniques, uh, you're going to, you can use spray paint, but you have to treat the foam first. Um, you can treat these with uh, Plastivent or uh, Mod Podge or even lacquer, um, although I think the lacquer on the polystyrene foam would probably eat it. Aerosols generally seem to. Um, if you need to treat it with Mod Podge or any of that stuff first, before you spray paint on there because otherwise it will eat right through it. Um, and very quickly too, like in about five minutes it can go through about four inches of this stuff. Um, so like what I've done here, this is a metallizing surface technique where you spray paint black and make sure you get the flat black, not the gloss. Um, if you get the gloss black, it won't work. Get the flat black and then just kind of go over the surface with a little bit of silver spray paint or you know copper or whatever color you want to use. Um, or you can get the silver or copper or steel rub and buff, which works really well too. It just costs twice as much. Um, and this is an awesome surface technique that you can use for any kind of plastic. But with foams, you can do this. It just requires that you seal it for because with the closed cell foam, like the um, e EPS, this stuff, uh, if you don't seal it, it'll eat through it. And with the open cell foams, like the EVA, if you don't seal it, it will drink the paint. Like you will put three times more on there than you need to. Um, because this stuff, it functions like a sponge. All those little open cells inside the foam just suck everything in. And yeah, you could empty like an entire can of paint into this and it wouldn't actually work the way you want it to. Now, I have a video online on how to um, make craft foam look like leather. Uh, but the quick and cheap way of doing it is first off, get yourself some brown craft foam and then just kind of go over it with an iron very quickly, a couple of times with an iron. That will take away some of this matte sheen that they have on the foam. It'll make it seem smooth, and then you can go in with even like a ballpoint pen and emboss this to make it look like leather. Um, you can do it with the thicker EVA foams as well, but you know the thinner stuff, the 16th inch, is the easiest to emboss, and it gets harder. Um, if you can't find brown EVA foam, you can use uh, any color you want, paint it brown uh, with uh, brown acrylic paint. Acrylic works well on this, spray paint not so much. Um, you paint it brown with brown acrylic paint and then you go lightly over the surface with black acrylic paint and that will make it look like leather. You can put in a little bit of dry brushing with white as well to make it seem aged, but um, it works really well. The only thing I will say about it is that you have to use a lot of it and it's not really an effective technique for a large area. So definitely try to get yourself the um, brown craft foam if you're going to be doing leather, uh, like faux leather, stuff like that. So, um, I think that's really well everything I want to talk about in terms of surfaces and foams and such. Um, so we're going to go ahead and cut the uh, streaming and I'll demonstrate.